The culmination of building in Ilkley came at the end of the century. Thatched cottages were demolished to make way for the grove in 1899. The arcade was built in 1895. And the last of the finest grand houses was built, Heathcote. It was a bold design statement by Sir Edwin Lutyens. He visited Ilkley and found it dreadful and was not impressed with the Victorian vogue for the Gothic Revival-style buildings built of local stone. He appealed to John Thomas Hemingway, who had worked his way up to become owner of wool merchants Richardson's in Bradford to build a house inspired by a Roman villa, something that would reflect his status. The house is quite unlike anything in the town, indeed Yorkshire. When completed in 1908, its cost was £17,500 and made Lutchen's name, although it ostracised Richardson from Ilkley Society. Today it is the registered office of the NG Bailey Organisation Limited, the same owners as Denton Hall. The last Middleton land sale took place in 1893, when Ilkley Moor was sold for £17,000 to the Urban District Council. To make Middleton accessible by motor car, the first new bridge in over 200 years was built across the wharf in 1904. To make sure it wouldn't wash away, it was built wide, with turrets to take the strength of the iron bridge. More civic building took place. A pledge to pay for a library by philanthropist Andrew Carnegie spurred the council to look at building a town hall that reflected the town's status. The King's Hall was added to provide a venue for concerts and shows. When this opened in 1908, it was found that there was no venue that dances and other light entertainment could be put on, especially if it was raining. So the Winter Gardens was added in 1913. The complex is still used for concerts and events today. This is the complimentary therapy festival that's held twice a year in the town. Sports and leisure clubs were being formed. Each village has its own cricket club. Menston and Ilkley both have two. Other clubs include rugby and tennis. But the coming of the First World War was a watershed for the area. The hydros were falling out of favour and were never as popular after the war. But it did reverse the fortunes of both Addingham and Burley when the mills worked flat out for the production of cloth for uniforms and blankets. There was great loss of life. The war memorials in the towns and villages are testimony to the fact. The interwar years saw a great trade depression. However, some new facilities were added. The Lido was opened in 1924 with the tennis courts and putting green opening in 1936. It's still as popular today, as long as the weather is sunny. Things we take for granted today were introduced in the 1920s, buses and electricity. The bus service meant that places were more accessible, none more so than Menston, that had a massive housing boom. In 1937, both Menston and Burley were taken under the wing of Ilkley Urban District Council. World War II again saw a rally for the textile industry, and the wealth of Ilkley saw more money being collected per head to build spitfires than anywhere else in the country. The hydros were requisitioned for war ministries, and the mills at Low Mill turned to aeroplane carburetor production. But post-war, the area seemed to be in terminal decline. Ben Ridding was demolished in 1955. The only remnants left are the old gates and the golf course. Today, of all the hydros, only the Craiglands remains as a hotel. The textile industry was decimated. The first to close was Burnside Mill in 1948, High Mill in 1953, 
Greenhome Mills in 1966, Old End in 1967, Town Head in 1971, and the last of the Lister Empire, Low Mill, in 1976. This was partly demolished and new mill buildings erected on the site, but in 2002 the textile industry finally closed its doors forever in the area. Another nail in the coffin was the closure of the rail line from Ilkley to Bolton Abbey. This is 8mm footage of the bridge over Brook Street being dismantled on the 10th of July 1966. The rise of the supermarkets since the 1960s has seen the end to local shops, such as Addingham's Co-op, which closed in 1970. Many more shops have closed on Main Street, as locals now prefer to shop at Tesco's or Booth's in, of all places, Ilkley. By 1974, the area had lost the right to govern itself. All the urban district councils were abolished. Now local government is conducted by the city of Bradford, which for over 100 years people had moved to the area to escape. Addingham and Ilkley both retain parish councils. Although they have limited powers, they're able to provide a community service, such as Ilkley's successful twinning with Coutances in France in 1969 that grew out of a link with the grammar school. But Ilkley thrives today as a shopping centre. The Moors and Station Plaza were developed in the 1980s. House building has been on a massive scale. Addingham in particular has been targeted for new housing. All the mills and loom shops have been converted into apartments, even the old school. Open spaces have been infilled with new developments. Addingham's population today is bigger than it's ever been. So too is Ilkley's, that stands at 14,000. But it isn't young people who are moving in. Schools are closing. The middle school in Addingham closed in 2001. The old national school, All Saints, in Ilkley in 2002. The junior school is being developed into housing, but sadly the infant school was demolished in April 2003. All Saints moved to a new site on the other side of town in November 2002. Now the children are all together in one building. But it's the motor car that has put the greatest strain on the services. Rather than shop locally, walk or use public transport, people are making more car journeys than ever. This has seen the building of two bypasses at Burley and at Addingham in 1989. But still, all those cars have to squeeze through the Brook Street traffic lights in Ilkley. To combat this threat to the heritage of the towns and villages, groups such as civic societies have fought to protect historic properties, views and facilities, firstly through conservation areas and latterly through village design statements that both Menston and Addingham have adopted. This has led to developers having to listen to the needs of local people. It's for the beauty of the area that people want to live here. Ilkley has been ranked 42nd town in the country for millionaires. 112 live here. And house prices have also just reached that magical £1 million sum here too. But the town can let its hair down. The Ilkley Carnival was inaugurated in 1988 and attracts over 20,000 people on the Maybank holiday to see the floats, bands, the fair and events in the arena. If you've come for the outdoor life, there's no getting away from it, whatever your age. There's a playground in Riverside Park, boating, or canoeing on the river, or the stone maze in Darwin Gardens. If it's a little hot in the summer, some people are rather more daring. Even if the moors beckon you, it can still be serious fun, whether it's rock climbing, paragliding, or joining in one of the fell runs organised by Ilkley Harriers.
This is the first leg climb of the annual Badgerstone Relay. The sports ground at Ben Ridding has been developed for a wide variety of clubs, including hockey, tennis, cricket and football. The 1,700 acres of Ilkley Moor continues to be looked after by Bradford City Council's Countryside Service. They look after paths and bridleways. Here they are repairing the bridleway network at Black Pots. But you can take it easy with a stroll on the moors or something more sedate in Middleton Woods when the bluebells are out in spring. Or a longer trek on the Dales Way, or the 70-mile Ebor Way long-distance path to Helmsley. At the Playhouse, Kirkland's Community Centre, the Lecture Hall in Burley or Addingham Village Hall, you can see a local production. Or at one of the annual festivals, the Wharfdale Music Festival has been taking place in Ilkley since 1906. It remains current, as today it includes a pop star competition. Other music societies include Ilkley Amateur Operatic Society, Choral Society and Cantores Oli Karnai. Another major event since 1973 is the annual Ilkley Literature Festival that attracts internationally renowned authors as well as local ones. This is Skipton-born Blake Morrison reading from his latest novel, Things My Mother Never Told Me, at the Crescent Hotel. But traditions continue. Spas still exist, even if they are in a former church hall. And even the Victorians like to have a go at a bit of carving. And people today. This intricate Celtic design is close to the 3,000-year-old hanging stone carvings. Could it be just graffiti that we've been trying to decipher for all these years?